Hey guys, I haven't really done one of these in a while where I just kind of sit and talk. So I figured now would be a good time because it's officially been a year since we moved to Germany and that feels like it's worth talking about. The way I decided to do it, what I thought would be most interesting for you guys is that I actually did a little Q&A over on my Instagram a few weeks ago. Got a lot of questions and I'm gonna answer them here now. It's also a little plug if you don't follow me on Instagram, which not many people do. There are a lot of questions on here. Some of them I broke down as being ones that I think are directed more specifically at me, but then I'm actually gonna bring my wife Amber in later. If you watch the channel, you know her. And we're gonna answer a few of them together as well. For those of you who don't know, I might as well introduce myself before we actually get started on the questions. My name's Tommy, I'm an American from Chicago, and I moved to Düsseldorf, Germany last year with my wife. If you wanna know how or why or any of that stuff, we have a really good answer to that question, and it's actually in the form of a video that I made. I don't, I'm pointing at nothing. There's a video on my channel of how we moved to Germany during a pandemic, if you're interested. But if you're like, dude, I don't care, I just wanna hear you talk about being in Germany for a year, let's just start with that then. First question, and it's a big one. Which do you like more, Dusseldorf or Cologne? Right out the gate with a banger. This rivalry goes back way further than I can trace. There's other videos that do deep dives on this, so I'll just give a very quick mention that these two cities are huge, huge rivals in Germany, probably the biggest rivalry among cities in Germany. Dusseldorf is the capital of North Rhine-Westphalia. Cologne is the biggest city in North Rhine-Westphalia, hence tension. But now it's much more of a rivalry of beer and football and beer and culture and beer. But I, I don't personally have any real loyalties other than living in Dusseldorf, but I, I really like both of them. I like both cities uh, for slightly different reasons. Cologne to me has a little more of that like edgy city vibe that I really enjoy, especially coming from Chicago. Cologne reminds me a little more of like the neighborhoods that my wife and I used to live in. Lots of character, not always the cleanest, not always the prettiest, but that's okay. And then Dusseldorf I really like because it's very chill, uh, it's very pretty, it's a really nice place to live. And I think overall, people tend to think that Cologne is like the uglier city with a little more personality and Dusseldorf is the prettier, nicer city that has maybe less personality or more of a posh personality. Eh. At the end of the day, I think that both cities' reputations aren't completely wrong, but I think Dusseldorf probably has more edginess and hip kind of grungy areas than it gets credit for, and I think that Cologne probably has more posh areas than they're willing to admit. I'd say if you're thinking of visiting, go to both. What is a totally German thing you'd like to see introduced in the US? Universal healthcare. What is your favorite street food? That's an interesting question. Uh, most people would probably say Döner kebab, but I don't know if that's really a street food anymore. Like when I think street food, I think like a food you get in a, in a truck or in like a little vendor, like literally right on the street. Dinner is like there, it's super mainstream now. I just mean, I guess it started as a street food for sure, but um, on technicalities alone, the fact that I've not been served dinner by a street vendor, uh, I'm gonna say currywurst. And I'm vegetarian, so the vegetarian kind of currywurst, they make that now. Have you tried Killipitch? What do you think? for non-Dusseldorfers or people who just have never tried Killipitch before. Killipitch is essentially an herbal liquor that they make here in Dusseldorf, super famous in the area. It's one of those things where when you go out for a night out, people are like, oh, we should do a shot of Killipitch. The way that I always explain it to my friends from Chicago is that it is Dusseldorf's Malort. And yeah, I've tried it a few times. It's not the most pleasant thing to drink, but it's also, I don't think, not meant to be. I think people drink it because it's like, it's the city's thing. Do you miss getting free drink refills and water at restaurants? 
of course. In Germany, there are no free refills, and the only way to get free water is to specify that you want tap water, and then the server will go get you a glass of room temperature tap water, and then you have to say, oh no, I actually want it cold, and then they'll have to go put ice in it, and then they're gonna give you even worse service than they were already planning on giving you anyway. How do people react when they find out you're from the US? Or how do they react when they find out you're living versus visiting? Good question. In a general sense, interested. I think. If you're visiting, probably less so, especially now that Trump isn't president. Nobody has that one like go-to question to ask you anymore. But if you're living here, I think they're a little more interested, especially in a place like Dusseldorf. But I think this can also depend on where you are in Germany. I think in a place like Berlin, they're probably like less surprised or less interested to meet an American because there are so many. Whereas in Dusseldorf, it's, there's a lot, but not that many. Everybody is like, I've met an American, but not everybody's like, I have an American friend. So uh, people are a little more interested. They ask you how you got here, what you're doing here, why are you here? But yeah, general opinions, people are nice and typically interested to know more. Do you still like NASCAR? This one is a joke from one of my friends, but I decided to put it in the video because I've actually become quite a Formula One fan now that I live in Europe and it's a lot easier to just turn it on on a Sunday afternoon and watch the race. It's pretty cool, recommend it. How are you? Good, man. Thanks, I appreciate you asking, I hope you're good too. Do you have a Spotify playlist? This one was actually asked not on the Instagram Q&A, but in the comments section of one of my recent videos. And it made me think, oh, I should do that. So now I have one and you guys can check it out at the link in the description. It's basically a playlist of music from and inspired by the motion picture Tommy Crossan. And I think that's all the questions that I had set aside just for me. So now let me bring Amber in and we'll answer a few together. We're back and with an outfit change because it's been like a week and a half since I recorded my part. Someone was busy. It's called working, babe. You should try it sometime. Whatever you say. So now, these are the questions that I picked out that I think make sense for both of us to answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you embarrassed? Yeah. It's funny though, because I like hate being on camera. I know you do. <laughs> but the people want to see you. Hello, people. I'm just going to jump right into the first questions. I have them right here, like I said. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite thing about Dusseldorf. Did you already answer these or these no. are okay you have No, answered but these. I'm I'm I okay. wanted to answer them with you. Okay. I was just I was gonna ask you to go first. Um probably like the commutability of it. I think the fact that you can walk around really easily, you can get to different parts of the city really easily. <laughs> what? Is <laughs> that what I thought you were gonna say? Uh, what did you think I was gonna say? Continue. Especially like coming from like much bigger cities, it's kind of interesting to be in a place where you can get around really quickly to different parts of the city and it doesn't taste like 45 minutes to go from one end to the other. I would probably say the people, I think. Oh, so you, you were like, I didn't think you were gonna say something so stupid. No, no, that's your answer. Um, yeah, I would probably say the people. I think when we first moved here, I mean, obviously it's like a beautiful European city and that's great, but I think the people have really made it even better for me. And that's been my favorite thing about being here because we've, met great people and then through people we've met more great people and been able to like find the things about Dusseldorf that I love so I, I do love like the restaurants and all the parks but I feel like the people that's my my favorite thing probably nicer answer than mine <laughs> but that actually leads us to uh, a good question I'm gonna skip ahead uh, someone asked how did we make friends luck yes um, luck and Facebook in some instances. Mm -hmm. I don't speak German, so I don't know who I'm gonna talk to, but we kind of were just like, it'll be fine, we'll reach out when we can. I think it was luck, and then we met some people, not meaning to meet them as friends, but yeah. like on Instagram, just trying to network and like find spaces to work, and then through expat groups, and then with those friends, mm -hmm. getting connected to other people, so we got very lucky because I was pretty convinced that <laughs> I was like, I don't speak German. It's a COVID. It's a COVID. <laughs> it's a COVID. Quarantine. What? Words are hard. But yeah, I was kind of just ready to hang out with you and Fergus for yeah. a long time. But we got lucky. Yeah, and everyone, I think like everywhere online, people say how hard it is to make friends in Germany. But I think we got very lucky because yeah, yeah, the people we met introduced us to other people. Everyone became good friends 
like fairly quickly, I would say. So now we have some some friends here who are, I, I mean, I feel like we're just as close to them as we were with people that we knew for, you know, multiple years back in Chicago. So that's been, been yeah. really cool. Yeah, the pand pandemic, that was the word I was looking for It's earlier. a COVID. The next thing was, what is your favorite thing about Germany? This might be more of like my favorite thing about Europe, but I've experienced it here in Germany. I love how much everybody walks. Like in Chicago, we walked a lot of places and so did a lot of people, but I felt like whenever we were in cities that like weren't Chicago or New York, people really look at you funny when you are walking places. Here, like I literally walk everywhere, even though there's great public transportation. Now I feel like I'm talking, <laughs> giving answers now like you are, which is like practical. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't answer. Oh, what's my favorite thing about Germany? The people. Oh, um, oh this is an interesting, what, what's your uh, favorite German word? Before you do that, yeah. let's answer this other question. Okay. What is Amber's German proficiency? Oh Lord. I'm so, I'm so nervous when I get in like <laughs> social situations, it's easier. Aber mein Deutsch sprechen is okay. Ich lerne Deutsch in ein Deutschkurs vor drei Monaten and yeah. ja. Also ich, du hast wirklich drei Monaten Deutsch gelernt. Ja. Yeah. Gelernt, ja. Also und auch seit einem Jahr lernst du jetzt Deutsch, ja. weil wir in den Land wohnen. That's new. Ich verstand in Deutsch uh, sehr gut. Honestly, when people talk to me mm -hmm. and we go out with people, I, it's to the point now where I can almost understand everything that someone says, but mm -hmm. it's a situation now where I'm a little bit like a child. I know what people are saying to me, but my vocabulary is still quite limited. And yeah, so it's uh, a lot of head nodding, a lot of like short sentences, incorrect tenses being used, but better than when I yeah, first showed up. I couldn't, I couldn't read anything, anything anybody would say to me. I had no idea what was going on. That leads us to the next question. What is your favorite German word? Oof. I can go first. Yeah, I'm looking outside at signs to see if I don't <laughs> know what it is. You see like a street sign? <laughs> Strasse is my Strasse. favorite German word. Um, mein Bahn. Mein, uh, I actually thought about it after you mentioned this, but I think one of my favorites, it's not really like a big word or anything, but the word gerne, yeah. because yeah. whenever you brought it up, when some when I get a chance and someone like says something or thanks me for something, and in my head I just like immediately respond and I'm like, gerne. It makes me feel like super fluent, and I think that's what I like about it. It's just like this quick, easy word, but you don't really know to say it until you've been in the situations enough to start using it impulsively. It's not like an interesting word necessarily. Mm -hmm. My favorite word. Favorite German word. I love the word lecker. I think you were. Yeah, I, I don't I really say it that often, it. but I think it was just like when I, I was like, okay, asking about German words when we first moved here, and I was in class, and you learn about like foods, and you're like. Apple, orange, soft, ah, oh, da, da 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 And then you're like, the Essen is lecker. And I was like, that is such a great way to describe something being tasty. I don't mm. know why, it just... It sounds like what it means, lecker. One more, I think, would probably be... So, you just said Gerda. I love mm. Genau. 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 I don't use it in sentences very often because it's to the point where I still am like, not confident enough, but like it is, um, I don't know, just... I like the way it sounds. I think you use it more often than you know because it is one of those things that becomes so second nature when you're speaking German. Just anytime anyone says something and you want to confirm it, genau. genau. Oh, here's one for you. Mm -hmm. What's it like or has it been a challenge living in Germany as a vegan? No, I get that question a lot from people. Mm -hmm. No. I think because oftentimes people think that being a vegan is hard to begin with and it's not. But that's another video for a channel that doesn't exist because it's his the channel. Amber Crossing <laughs> channel. It has not been hard at all. Like I mean, it is definitely a culture of like meat and potatoes and hearty foods, but Again, we live in a very international city, so there's mm -hmm. a lot of different options. I've also found a lot of traditional German places also now have vegan food, so it has not been hard whatsoever. Well, uh, switching gears, mm -hmm. what's something that we miss the most about America? Ooh. About America or where we live, or can I just take whatever? I, I think want it. To I think you can interpret this as just anything about your American-based life. I mean, I of course miss our people, there. It was, mm -hmm. It's hard to not be by family like we were before and friends. I think I also miss like how, so I will say this with a caveat, like there are, it is 
there is diversity in Dusseldorf, but like we were living in Chicago where there's just all different types of people all the time. The population's like exponentially larger. So mm. like here sometimes I get that feeling of like, oh, I'm like the only brown person like in this store right now, which is like hard to have that happen in many places back in the States. Um, I mean, it still exists, don't get me wrong. We have our own problems, but I would say like diversity, but just like seeing people that look like me on a regular mm -hmm. basis. The black um, Germans are out here. Oh, for but, sure. I mean, obviously yeah. like black folks are everywhere. Yeah. They're coming for you. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely staying in. <laughs> I think one other thing that I will say I miss, and Germans do not come for me because people who are German have told me this too, but I do miss kind of default niceties that Americans, specifically Midwesterners have. At times, like I, I can definitely agree that sometimes people in the States can just be like nice for no reason, if we, even yeah. if you're just having the shortest of interaction. But sometimes here it's like, especially when you first moved here, it was a little jarring yeah. for us to be at a restaurant and people are just like, hi, what do you want? And now I've come to learn that like, on the flip side of that, that doesn't mean that people are mean. So I'm definitely yeah. not saying that Germans are mean. Yeah. I will just say sometimes like, if you're having like a rough day and you want to go get a coffee it's nice if you just see someone smiling at you and they're like how are you and you know i know like mm -hmm. you might not really care but it still feels nice i'm a human yeah. being yeah. so i miss that a bit yeah i i actually think mine's the same thing it's like this I think it's like a general American positivity mm. to things and like that doesn't mean there's no negative things or the people that aren't assholes to each other sometimes like we are. I think there's like this foregone conclusion like everyone is raised with this idea that attitudes are contagious is yours worth catching. I feel like that's every elementary school like slogan. So everyone is kind of like coached from a young age to be like be positive in your, in your interactions with people mm -hmm. however bad a day you're having it's no one else's like business, like it's not your job to make them, I, and uh, controversially, I think it's not anyone's job to make other people happy, but at the same time, I think like, I'm happier when I make other people happy in the interactions that I have. Yeah. And I think that that's like a more common way to go about things in America than it is in Germany. Again, we've also had really good interactions with people like on the oh, street yeah. and stuff like that. Like, like a people, definite vibe. Yeah, so. they, a lot of people will still walk up to you and, and say something, but it's not, that's not the typical American. Most people think it's like a fake thing. Like, mm -hmm. oh, Americans are so fake. But I think we Which, just like being yeah, nice. We do like being nice. Sometimes it is fake. Like, we get that, yeah. like, how are you today? And I will say, probably like half the time or more, no one expects you to actually answer. Just we've been coached to ask that. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's a give and take. So yeah. I do miss it. I understand that there's like, yeah. Differences on both ends, but. Yeah, I don't think one's worse than another, but it's, it's mm -hmm. because I'm used to one other one, I'd say I miss it. What's something that was harder about Germany than expected? And what's something that was easier about living in Germany than you expected? I expected the bureaucracy. I expected the amount of paperwork. It's still worse than what I expected. I've gotten more pieces of physical mail <laughs> in the year I've lived in Germany than the last 10 years I lived in America. Everything comes in the mail and then it's like, if you have a response, write us a letter back. I'm like, why would I write? Can't we like every time send you an open, email? Every like, time you open the mailbox, I get so excited. I'm like, do we have mail? You're like, yes. Kind post is auch gute post. <laughs> I think that's the phrase. For our specific situation, and I actually think this could be true for a lot of people, so that's why I say it, but I think making friends was easier than I expected. Mm -hmm. I think people hype you up, especially if you're so, if you're watching this video, you're probably someone who goes and, and, and watches the, the expat YouTube. A lot of people really emphasize how hard it is to make friends and how closed off people are. That just wasn't our experience. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that it's good to go in with an expectation that it might not happen right away. Like I think that's healthy to be like, prepare yourself, but I, don't be so surprised if you meet people that you click with pretty, quickly because mm. that happened with us. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the whole thing was has been like hard. It's funny yeah. because I think oftentimes like when I talk to people and they're like, oh, it seems like it's going great. I'm like, that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's bad. going poor. No, but I think that's the problem with like- The problem with social media, it man. Is, it is, and I mean, I, I will say like, it, you look on my stuff, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna post cute pictures of me mm -hmm. by a fountain because I was looking cute that day. Or like, here's a good meal we had. But like, that's not life. Like it's been mm -hmm. difficult to adjust and we moved across the ocean away from our families. And so anyway, getting off of the question. But I mean, I think 
the most difficult part for me is like I knew I would be homesick, but I haven't been homesick enough to be like, okay, we're done, like we shouldn't be here. But it was just, I think it was just difficult to adjust, but that was like not unexpected. I don't know, it's like a yeah. weird way of answering the question. Cause I knew it would be hard. It was just like in the moment of it, it always is harder because mm -hmm. you've never felt it before. But I will say it, was easier than I expected to kind of look beyond that and still be happy here and like enjoy my time here. And so I had this feeling like I know so many things can be true at one time when it comes to your feelings and just life. And so, yeah, it was harder than I expected to move here because I consider myself to be pretty independent and I like to travel and I didn't think it would be that difficult, but it was easier for me to move past it than I thought it would be. All right, final question. How long would you like to stay? I don't know, everyone asks that. Truly, truly everyone asks that. And I've yet to have a real- I have an answer. answer. I mean, like, I have an answer, but I like change the way I explain it every time I feel like, but I don't know. I think when we moved here, when we first moved here, we were like, I think we kept saying we need to be here at least like two or three years. Mm -hmm for it to be worth the investment of taking our lives, both the physical and emotional investment of moving yourselves across the world. And since we've been here and I feel like we've invested maybe more more money into this apartment than I think we thought we would. Mm -hmm. And we've made also more emotional investment than I think we expected to have at this point with the friends we've made and the relationships we've built. I think my minimum time has maybe gone up. Like for me, I, some, I start to think like, oh, is it like, is five years my minimum? But then at the same time, I don't I don't want to set a minimum or maximum because I also don't want to reach a point where I'm like, oh, the, the three years is up, it's time to leave because I don't think we view our lives that way. I think we view it as like, we're here now, our lives are here now, and we just kind of like are going to keep going with this until there's a compelling reason not to. You stole my answer. <laughs> Did I? Anything you want to add then? No, that was, I mean, I guess I will say, I think the only time I ever had a time limit was before we got here, because we were like, it needs to be long enough to have like an ROI, you know? And I think now that we're here, pretty much I think after the first month, I was like, all right, I'm invested, I'm not leaving. Mm -hmm. I don't like thinking so far into the future, it doesn't allow you to like live in the present and enjoy where you're at. And I think so often you are thinking about the next thing and like, even when it comes to goals and everything like that, it can really like cloud where you are and make your present not enjoyable. And I just don't want to do that. I haven't wanted to do that since we've gotten here. And so I think in my mind, I'll just stay until they kick me out. Well, that's the end of the Q and A. Is it? It is. Okay. Thank you for participating. Thank you for having me. It was good to have you here. <laughs> Thank you for all the people who submitted questions on Instagram that helped us, you know, actually fill out the Q&A. Otherwise, we wouldn't have even made this video. If you like this, like and subscribe because it's YouTube and you should do that and it'll help me and it'll make me want to make more videos. What else? I don't think there is anything else. Get vaccinated. Yeah. Wash behind your ears. Call your mother. Call your parental figure yes. in your life. Get vaccinated. That's gonna. Well, that's gonna. That's gonna set it popping. Black <laughs> Lives Matter. I'll make all these commenters mad. Keep coming for us. Nobody's Keep coming. coming. Nobody's coming for us. <laughs>